Hi everyone, welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. And we are continuing our discussion. We are taking a slight turn, however, and we are going to discuss what are known as genetic anomalies in the DNA of the group known as African Americans, Negroes, Black Americans, colored, indigenous black Americans. We're going to look at the anomalies, the research on the anomalies in the DNA and the genetic heritage of that particular group. And this should hopefully inform some of the research projects that some of you are going to be doing as you are preparing to create the roles and you are thinking about the um, divergent histories of the different people in the United States. All right, so let me quickly go over the four genetic anomalies before we dive into the one we're going to focus on first. And so there are four genetic anomalies. One has to do with the Y chromosome, and that is for males. So that would be for African American, Negro, colored, indigenous, black American males. Uh, the other one is the mitochondrial DNA anomalies, which relate to Henrietta Lacks and the immortal cells. The other one is this issue of missing links between African-American DNA and assumed West African DNA. And the fourth has to do with lupus. And the area that we're delving into is an area known as forensics. And forensics is basically the combining of any area of science with the law. And so there will be a number of forensic issues that you will encounter as you are doing your research. And so that's where we're, we're delving into that right now. So let's first look at the research of Dr. Henry Louis Gates. In 2013, uh, Dr. Gates indicated that only about 388,000 individuals, enslaved individuals, were actually brought to the continental United States. And this is contrasted with the um, estimated 12 million total that were transported out of Africa over into the Americas. And this is also, this is important because this is a very small number in terms of genetic diversity and blood inheritance of African Americans. And it also suggests that there might have been some hand selection due to specific race or ethnicity in Africa. And so we're going to look at those biological DNA anomalies with these things in mind, these facts in mind related to this small number that was transported over. Now, most researchers and theorists espouse a theory of out of Africa in terms of migration of human populations. And so with respect to African-Americans, uh, the standard narrative is that there was a migration from the uh, West Africa area into the United States. And this belief is undergirded by a finding that the majority of Y chromosome DNA in African American males is related to the E group. So it's uh, uh, E group descendants. And there are some discrete uh, groups with the R chromosome, the Y chromosome in Africa and also in what would be considered African-American males. And so we're going to look at the extent to which there might be another narrative. And remember, when you're looking at research, even though you may have been believing something and you found research that supported something, sometimes you will find other research that negates what you have been previously told. And when that happens, it's prudent to look into that research and not just ignore something that does not comport with what you have been told previously or what you have come to believe. 
Now the Legacy Tree website gives a nice concise understanding of the Y chromosome and it is basically the chromosome that is inherited along the male line of descent. So the paternal line of descent. So the fathers, females do not carry Y chromosomes. Okay, here is a simplified tree of the Y chromosome haplogroups. And you will see that the oldest is actually the A, and then the youngest is in that R1 grouping. And so it's been found that a large number of males who would identify as African American, Negro, colored, Black American, indigenous American males, a large number fall under the E branch of this tree. And then there's another group that falls under, largely under that R1 grouping. And there are a lot of assumptions that you'll hear about the meanings of individuals who fall under the E branch and those who fall under the R1 branch and lots of assumptions about how people uh, came to be under a particular branch. Lots of assumptions about that, particularly the R1 group. There is a, an assumption that that group of males came about through sexual assault through the slave trade. And there is some question about whether or not that is completely accurate. Okay, and just as a reminder, as we're going forward, remember the A is the oldest in terms of this tree and all of the other groups are like branches. So the A would almost be like the tree trunk and then the other groups growing out of that foundational tree trunk. Okay, so let's start talking about one of those anomalies. Um, in 2013, researchers uh, Mendez et al. affiliated with the University of Arizona, they discovered that the most ancient root of the Y chromosome in terms of that tree is an African-American man. And so what they essentially uncovered was that an African-American male was in possession of what is known as the ultimate father DNA. His DNA is basically the most ancient of all male Y haplogroup DNA that's ever been found on the planet. And this Y chromosome DNA is basically the paternal genetic heredity marker that is passed from fathers to their sons down through time. Now, what does this mean? It basically means that this African-American male's Y chromosome carries the ancestral genetic state of all modern humans currently on the globe. And so this DNA has been labeled AOO and the A stands for Adam. Now this DNA is older than the oldest maternal DNA that's been found on the planet so far. And it even predates the oldest actual human fossils that are currently known. And so while this DNA is unknown, and this is the interesting part, this DNA is unknown in the traditional hunter-gatherer populations of sub-Saharan West Africa. It is, however, found uh, there is a DNA rarity that's found in very low frequency among discrete Cameroonian males. And because of this finding from 2013, uh, these researchers are encouraging other researchers, of course, to be cautious in their extrapolations about the way that people have migrated and also about the way that they are explaining genetic heritage. Now, when you add this to the issue of the immortal cells also being found among an African-American female, 
it creates a, a very interesting genetic landscape for African Americans. And it brings up the question of how does such a thing randomly happen in the course of human history? You've got this entire globe and then you have this very small group of individuals who were purportedly brought over from Africa, very small group compared to uh, larger groups going to other places. And in this very small group, you have this extremely antiquated male DNA and then you have this immortal DNA coming from an African-American female. Now there's often a lot of focus on the E branch in terms of African-American male heritage. And um, when you add to those other two anomalies, the A, Y chromosome and the immortal cells, there is this other issue of the R1 B Y male haplogroup. And this particular haplogroup is also shared with discrete Cameroonians, it's shared with discrete Native American Indian groups and discrete Western Eurasian groups, along with some discrete Western European groups, which is where the assumption came from that Finding this in African-American males is always related to rape uh, in terms of slavery, but this may be a false assumption. Now, when you add to this R1B issue, what they've also, also found is that this R1B has not been profusely found among the West African populations from which the enslaved African-American ancestors were purportedly stolen from during the transatlantic slave trade. And so this R1B group serves as yet another genetic marker, another genetic connection to Cameroonians, discrete Cameroonians, Native American Indians, and Western Europeans, particularly the Irish. And so this may have very little to do with African-American female ancestors and the slave rape narrative that has been pushed on African-American males who demonstrate this genetic marker. And it should be noted that Certain Cameroonians also have some unusual genetic architecture. And this was reported in 2011 by researchers Montano et al. And they were out of Rome and Spain. And these researchers looked at what is known as the African Bantu expansion. And they looked at that group and that expansion to examine the Y chromosome variations in Central West Africa. And so these researchers were surprised by their findings. And what they found looking at DNA samples was that the evolutionary scenario that has been previously painted, it's far more complex than has ever been anticipated in terms of recorded history. Now, in keeping with research from Dr. Lisa Aubrey uh, out of Arizona, what these researchers found when they looked at chromosome variations in the Congo and Nigeria and Cameroon, they found that there's a, and this is a quote, a marked differentiation of Cameroonian populations from the rest of the data set. Data set. Okay, to wrap this up, what we are looking at here is a new narrative about the genetic landscape of African American, Negro, Black American, Indigenous Black American males. And this also supports an alternative notion about where the enslaved individuals were taken from. And so it also challenges this narrative about the relationship between African-American male DNA and European-American male DNA and this rape narrative 
as people now need to look more closely at this uh, anomalous relationship, perhaps between African American males, discrete Native American groups, the Irish and the Cameroonians. This is one of the reasons why in doing the research projects and in going forward talking about research and understanding African American, Negro, colored, Black American, Indigenous American heritage, there needs to be room made for a variety of narratives and a variety of heritages. Uh, you, so you need to be more open to allowing people to have their own genetic narratives and their own cultural histories. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care and see you soon.